Last week, I talked an introduction to the team's toolkit, and I'll show you a recap of that in a second. Um, so just a glimpse of what I'm doing. Um, last week was an intro, and I'll recap that. And then today, I'll, I'm going to make that a little more real by showing you how to apply all of that in VS Code. And then in the future, I'll talk about VS, our CLI, um, deploying to Azure, how to use the CI CD with our CLI. And um, put some question marks here because I'll happy to have your feedback with anything that you want to see in future parts of the series. Um, so just to recap, if you weren't able to join me last week, um, Teams Toolkit is uh, a set of things for developers. And these are the things that I think are interesting for you to know about. So it's project templates, samples, documentation. Um, we have a task runner to help automate a lot of the tedious setup needed. Um, you can group that those configurations in what we call environments. We have infrastructure templates so you can host these uh, you know, tab apps or bot apps in Azure, and we use Bicep for that. We have a simulator-like tool for doing local development that we call uh, the Teams App Test Tool. And then we have a design time previewer that we call the Adaptive Card Previewer. So you can design adaptive cards, which are the things you can use to display kind of UI inside of your chat elements for agents and bots. And then we have some workflow templates and Azure DevOps templates, and we also help you set up dev tunnels so you can debug these things. So there's a lot going on. And um, I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to show you what this looks like inside of VS Code, and we'll just do something real quick um, so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. So let me switch over to VS Code. First thing you'll want to do if you haven't already, if you want to get started, you can just install Teams Toolkit. It's an extension um, in the marketplace. So here's what that looks like. So you can go ahead and install that. And then once you install it, you will get uh, this icon on the right or on the left here, sorry. Um, let's see, I did this little this little thing. So right here um, is the Teams Toolkit icon. So you click on that and you're presented with um, some UI to help you get started. First thing that's interesting is you have a place to manage your accounts. So you have a place to choose your M365 account and your Azure account. Your M365 account is where you want to run and debug these Teams apps. So it gives us a hint on how to launch Teams and which tenant um, you want to launch that in and when you want to debug this. And then Azure account is not necessary to get started, but if you want to use our provisioning templates to host these things in Azure, then you can use your Azure account, let you select your subscription, et cetera, um, when you want to get started. So uh, first step is when you first install this, you'll you'll have a blue button here to like create an app, but I've already opened a project, so menu looks slightly different, but it's still here. Create a new app. This is a for our templates. So I mentioned earlier, the first thing on that list, I think, was project templates, samples, and documentation. We have a list of templates, kind of a wizard-like way for you to pick how you want to get started with building these apps. And we have a couple of opinions here for you to get started, like agents, custom engine agents, and then some more traditional Teams apps like bots, tabs, message extensions. And you can also build um, Outlook add-ins. Um, so I uh, bot, you know, there's a couple sub things. You can do notifications, chats. Um, you can just do basic stuff if you just want to see like a bare bones example. And that's what I'll show you today because it's pretty simple. Um, we also have all the agent templates, so you can create, you know, chat bots, uh, chatting over your data, like to connect with Azure OpenAI, etc. So we have lots of different ways for you to get started building these things. I just chose um, a basic bot, and that's what I have open here. So if I go back to my file explorer, close this. Um, all of our projects have a similar shape. So all of our templates and samples. And you have a VS Code folder, which is where we put all the uh, defaults for you to run tasks and set up debugging. So you'll have all that set up inside of our templates. The app package is where we put the Teams app manifest. So if you've done any development with Teams, you might be familiar with this. But if not, this is what, uh, what you define a Teams app with. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here um, by default uh, for a bot. And Outside of the app package, um, we have environments. Um, so this is one of the things I mentioned in the toolkit is we have a way for you to group configuration sets. And by default, we give you a couple opinions here. We have a local, we have one remote um, environment for Azure, which we default to the naming of dev. And then we also have one for using our simulator, which is called test tool. And these are just ways for you to configure settings um, for the cloud resources that are needed to run these apps for the toolkit. So for example, if we look at my local environment, um, I've already run this just to make sure it would work for you folks. So these values are already filled in, but by default, these values would be empty. So we need a bot, we need a Teams app ID, uh, we need a tunnel 
for these things. And the tenant is based on my account that I logged in, et cetera. So these are all values that the toolkit can help you automate. And I mentioned we have a composable automation uh, kind of system for that. And that's expressed in these YAML files. So I'll start with local because I think that's the most easy uh, to understand. And so local is, you know, I want to press F5 or start debugging inside of VS Code. So there's some things I want to do so that way my app works when I am uh, start debugging. And we give you a way to express what the toolkit does during those steps. And we kind of broke it out into two stages. Basically, we have a provision stage and a deploy stage. And the provision stage, if you look at this, let me pop this up a little bit. The provision stage will create a Teams app. Um, it will create an enter ID app, which is needed for a bot. So these are all dependencies of running these things. Uh, I see a question in the chat. Do we have Vite templating for this? Yeah, the latest pre-release of the toolkit just switched from create React app to Vite um, for tab templates. So yes, we have Vite support for that now. Um, and I'll get to the other questions then in a minute. I, they're kind of scrolling a little fast. Um, the next step in the automation is to create a bot framework registration, validate the app manifest, and um, basically have a bunch of predefined actions to automate whenever you need to run a provision task. And then in the deploy step, we're going to run npm install uh, for this project. And then if we look into the example code for my bot, so this is all like bot framework code for handling a bot. There's a couple things in here. Uh, I think it's Right, yeah, where I set up, let me zoom out a little bit. Where I set up um, the configuration for bot framework, I'm using this config object. And if we look at that real quick, you can see it's going to rely on some environment variables here. That's how this template's set up. So these environment variables are the values of those are created by the toolkit. So now that my app runtime needs some things that my Teams toolkit environment created. So this is a very common approach. So we have some actions to do that for you. And that's what this action does. So basically going to say, hey, take Take the bot ID from my local environment, which is in here. And I want you to copy it to a file that we've called local configs. But a lot of folks might do something, oh, it's not iron, might do something like env um, and put, put that value in there. So when I run this, you can see here's the local configs. It just copies this. And then you can use um, env or whatever that package is called for injecting runtime uh, environment variables. I think by default, we're using this package env.command. So you can see, just going to inject this into my NPN, like into my runtime. So I have this access to that. So the templates are all set up to do this. So that's how the automation works. And whenever I press F5, let me undo that so this continues to work. Next thing you can do is uh, choose your debug target. So we have all this set up for you, um, so it's easy to run and debug. The test tool is what the default is for this project template. So if we just click Start, when I do this, it's going to go through the test tool automation steps, which is going to install the test tool, run npm and command or npm install, and then um, set up some environment variables for the runtime. And then this launched over here. So let me bring this over for you so you can see. This is what the test tool looks like. So this is this simulator-like environment I was talking about. And what's nice about this is you don't need to have any cloud resources for this. Um, so there's no bot framework registration. There's no enter app IDs. There's no accounts needed. This is really just like a bot emulator, but we've tuned it to be um, or to give you some UX that's very similar to Teams. So you can get a little closer of a feel of how your Teams um, agents or bots are going to interact. So you have options to what does it look like to chat with it in a personal context versus a group chat context um, and a team context team context so you'll get some of the ux that's similar so you can invoke it like with ats um, you can mock teams activities like installing a bot um, adding users or you can define a custom activity to trigger so you can test kind of mock these things and test them and then there's also a whole um, way for you to express like dummy data like this user's name is Al alex wilbur um, and i think there's also some other uh, dummy data in here but it's all expressed through, um, I think, a YAML file. And so you can customize all the data here so you can mock things uh, for users. But it just gives you a way to uh, talk to your bot. And you could uh, see this is running. You could set breakpoints in here. 
um, and debug just a conversation without having to worry about getting into Teams yet, which is another layer of complexity and requires um, permissions and accounts and things like that. So the test tool is a good option to get started, but eventually you're probably going to want to run inside of Teams. So we have that set up for you as well, and that's going to rely on this account. So I have already logged in with my N365 account, and I can debug inside of Teams. And what that's going to do now is it's going to run the steps in here because I'm going to run in Teams. So I actually need real th uh, things. I need a Teams app ID. I need the Entra app ID. I need Bot Framework. Um, and then I have some other optional steps like validating my manifest, make sure I didn't make a typo, um, zip my map package, upload it to Teams Developer Portal so it appears on the platform. And then this uh, it will launch in a browser session by default. So I'll go ahead and this is all just the normal Teams installation experience. And one of the things the toolkit does for you during this experience as well is it'll check, make sure that you have custom app upload enabled. So this is to let you know if you can actually install apps. So of course I do because I've set this up. So here's my bot, let me get it a little smaller here. And this is now running inside of Teams. So I can actually go through my bot framework experience. Um, I can chat with it. Um, I can test out what it actually is going to do inside of Teams. And then this is also connecting to the VS Code debugger. So I can set breakpoints and debug this uh, directly inside this browser session. Of course, I've accessed all the browser tools and everything if I need to use those. Um, so that's what the toolkit gives you by default. Um, some other things that we have are the adaptive card previewer. Um, that's this extension. So you can install this and you will get uh, basically real time previews of an adaptive card. So if you open an adaptive card JSON file, um, you'll be able to click preview and see a preview side by side. I don't actually, I don't think I have one inside this project. Otherwise, I would show you. No, there's not one in this project, but. Um, you can investigate that if you're doing adaptive cards and it will it live updates on the right side and gives you a way to switch between whether light mode dark mode or high contrast mode and the cool thing about that is it's using the same rendering stack as teams so if you're doing adaptive cards it's the only um thing available right now that is using the same rendering stack as teams so you'll know that it's uh, the most accurate representation of what an adaptive card is going to look like once it's inside of teams without actually having to run it inside of teams which is nice and so let me just make sure that I didn't miss any of my bullet points. So we talked about the templates, uh, the task runner, which is the YAML files, and the environments, which are just environment files, but you can group them into sets. Um, the infrastructure files, I didn't get into those. We'll go into those in a future series on how to use the infrastructure files to host this thing in Azure. So right now I just showed you how to run the test tool and how to run inside of Teams. We didn't actually host anything in Azure. Everything was running um, locally. And then... Uh, the adaptive card reviewer and the GitHub workflow and DevOps pipeline. That'll be another future series on how to do CI CD. Um, Dev tunnels is one thing I didn't show you, but it does happen. Um, that's where these tunnel endpoints come from. So we're using VS Dev tunnels, and that's all. You know, a lot of what's cool about Toolkit is a lot of this stuff is you don't need to know it right away, but once you want to customize something, you can start peeling back the layers. And a lot of it is, um, you know, available for you to customize. So as your project evolves, um, you know, there's less of a black box than there used to be. Um, we've tried to make as much customizable as possible. So between the YAML files and just using familiar things like VS Code tasks, you can go through and see um, what these are doing. Like uh, we have some steps here to validate, make sure ports are available for you to do debugging. And we have things for you to start the test tool. And somewhere in here, I thought there was a a tunnel yeah there's a start local tunnel task yeah so you can see here what it's doing just calling another uh, task that we have in our toolkit to fill in these endpoints or these environment variables with the results from running the dev tool uh, to create a tunnel so that's how that's set up and i think that's pretty much my time so if you have any questions um let me go back to my slides i, think I have yeah if you want to get started you can go to this aka.ms slash ttk That'll take you, to believe, to the GitHub repo or the documentation. I can't remember where I pointed that to, but it'll take you to a place to get started. And you can join me next time where I'll show, um, I think it'll be on the, let's see, on the, yeah, on December 10th. I'll talk about Intro to Team Toolkit for Visual Studio. So if you're a .NET developer, you might be interested in seeing how we use Visual Studio to do um, similar things. All right. Thanks for listening.